for us together this morning. As we break the bread of life together. If there's anything I covet this morning is that you will give me the freedom to be able to speak in this place. I decree there will be no hindrance. There will be no blockage. There will be no barrier. That there will be a free flow of your word from the throne room of God. And that there will be no barrier between me and your people. That your word will have free course. And that that which, we needs, which needs to be built will be built. And at the same time that which needs to be destroyed will be destroyed. May this service be profitable for each and every one of us Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody said amen. Turn your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Mark, chapter 4. Mark, chapter 4, please. We're going to read together verse 35 through verse uh, 41. Mark, chapter 4, 35. To the end, I'll read the odd number of verses. And if you please read the even number of verses together. Mark chapter 4, 35 through the end. And the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over. Unto the other side. Read. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Read. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Read. Let's read verse 41 together, if you will, please. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. I want to zero in on verse 40 tonight, this morning. Which I will read again. Verse 40. And he said unto them. Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? And how is it that ye have no faith? I read it for the last time. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Let me turn to the person beside you and ask them that same question. Say after me. Say, why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Let me turn to the person again beside you and say to another person, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now let me say it to yourself. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? That's what I want to deal with this morning. A million dollar question. Why? Why? 
Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? You know what amazed me here? Who will go through what they went through and not be afraid? Well, let's, let's just be honest with ourselves. I mean, I was a, on a cruise with my wife. The last cruise I was ever in. I have no plans to go on another one anytime soon. When we finally came out in Manhattan, I looked at the water behind me and I said, you will try before you get me on you again. As a matter of fact, I gave a name to that cruise. My wife just said it. I called it the cruise from hell. Who will be in this kind of book? And not be afraid. Amazingly, Jesus never excused their fear. Rather than excuse their fear and say, I understand. He asked them the question we just asked ourselves. Why? Why are you afraid? Why is it that you don't have faith? I want to deal with this issue this morning, folks. The issue of fear. We don't like to admit it. But many of us live our days, our months, and our years in fear. Fear of what is real. Fear of what is imagined. And the question the Lord will ask you is the same question he asked the disciples. Why? Why are you so fearful? If I were there, I would have answered him. I would have said, you are asking such a question under these circumstances. Why are we fearful? We are just about to die. We are just about to sink. We are just about to perish. Uh, you can condemn these apostles if you want, but if you were there, you would have done worse. My only prayer for you and for me this morning is that somehow, somehow, the Lord will reach you where you are sitting. And take you to a place where nothing bothers you. Where nothing moves you. Wind, rain, storm. The truth of the matter is this. You cannot be full of faith and be full of fear at the same time. The two don't go together. You cannot walk in faith and walk in fear at the same time. I like the way thought came to my mind. It says you cannot be fearful and be faithful at the same time. It's impossible. And my prayer for you this morning is that God will empty you. And God will empty me of any fear that may be present inside us in Jesus' name. I had a very graphic dream yesterday morning that gave me the confidence this is what God really wants me to deal with this morning. It was something like this. I was going on a road and a mentally deranged person started trailing me. Dressed like a sick person dresses in Africa. All dirty and all fierce. 
I looked behind me, he was following me. So I increased my pace. And he did the same. So I ran. <laughs> and he ran. And if you knew anything about mad people, they run better. So before long, he caught up with me. And he grabbed my shirt and pulled me to himself. He said, are you afraid? I said, you bet I'm afraid. He said, afraid of who? He said, afraid of you. He said, why are you afraid? I said, because there's no telling what you can do. I don't know what you have up your sleeves. Then he made a statement that shocked me. He said, but you could have taken authority over me. And I said, oh, that never crossed my mind. Then he made a statement that I woke up with. He said, be careful how you fear. He said, be careful how you fear. Then he went on this long lecture. He said, it is not everything that you should be afraid of. And it is not everybody that you should be afraid of. And it is not every time and every circumstance that you should be afraid of. He says, stop panicking as if you have no God. He says, stop panicking as if you don't have the promises of God. Yesterday morning. I just stood there looking at him. And then he revealed his true identity. He really wasn't a mentally deranged person. He removed his outer coat and was wearing a three-piece suit. He said, I just did that to teach you a lesson. Why are you so fearful. How is it that you have no faith? I want to take you on a journey this morning that will transform your life. That will deliver you from a problem common to humanity. And that is the problem of fear. There is what we call natural fear. We all have it. It's something that is built into us by God. If I sneak in behind you and you are not aware that someone is behind you and I make a big noise, you are startled and you are afraid. That's, that's natural. But this one that we are reading about this morning is the one that troubles God. And God says, why are they so fearful? There are over 400 scriptures that forbid us to fear. That means at least for 365, 66 days of the year, there is a scripture for you that tells you you don't have to be afraid. I mean, I say something to you this morning. If we were to take a census, you will be amazed at how many people are seated here listening to me that are afraid of something. Afraid of something. It could be their job. It could be their health. It could be their finances. It could be their tomorrow. It could be their marriage. It could be their pregnancy. It could be their child. There's always something to be afraid of. And so I decided to do a journey into the scripture to find out where the Bible says fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. I wanted to read all the scriptures to you, but I know it will take all day. 
So I decided to limit myself to where it talks about fearing not in the book of Isaiah. And what I found will amaze you. Let's take a journey. Folks, to about maybe six or seven scriptures in the book of Isaiah. Beginning with Isaiah chapter 7, verse number 4. Isaiah 7, verse number 4. And then we'll read Isaiah 12, Isaiah 35, Isaiah 41. And if it's only this we're able to read and time is gone, it will be worth our while. Isaiah 7, verse number 4. I'd like for us to read it together, if you will, please. So if you have your Bibles, please open to Isaiah 7, 4. Let's read. And say unto him, uh-huh, Take heed and be quiet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Be quiet. Shh. Be quiet. Have you noticed that people who are afraid are always talking? <laughs> people who are afraid always have something to say. Always talking, always talking. And they're not talking about how God will quench their fears. They're talking about the seriousness of what they're afraid of. He said unto them, take heed and be quiet. What's the next statement? Fear not. What's the next statement? Neither be faint hearted. For the two tails of this smoking fire brands, and for the fierce anger of raising and Syria, and of the son of Remaliah, I'll take care of them. Can I say something to you this morning? What you are afraid of, God already has a plan to take care of them. No, you didn't hear what I said. You did not hear what I said. I said, what you are afraid of, God already has a plan of taking care of them. So, if God already has a plan of taking care of them, what are you supposed to do? Relax. Relax. And don't fear. But the sad thing about us is this. Even when we know God has made plans to take care of them, we don't relax until we see God take care of them. Let's go on. Isaiah chapter 12. Verse 2. Isaiah 12, verse 2. Let's read. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust. What's the next statement? And not be afraid. You cannot trust and be afraid at the same time. How can you tell me you are trusting God and you are walking in fear? How can you tell me I'm believing God but you are walking in fear? He said, I will trust and not be afraid. Let's read. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song has also become my salvation. Another word for salvation there is deliverance. It's my deliverer. It's my deliverer. And he will deliver me. Can I hear an amen from somebody? Now let's go to Isaiah 35 verse 4. Isaiah 35 verse 4. Here is a message to those of us who are afraid of something. Isaiah 35, 4, let's read. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and he will save you. I didn't hear an amen from somebody. All right, let's go on. Isaiah 41. We're going to read 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Just powerful scripture. Isaiah 10. Isaiah 41 verse 10. You ready? All right, let's go. Fear not thou, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Yes. I will uphold you with the right hand of my... It's, it's as if they were doubting. So he was saying, yes, I mean it. Yes, I mean it. Yes, I mean it. Can you tell somebody and tell them, yes, it's going to be all right. I'm telling you, yes, it's going to be all right. Every, everything is going to be fine. The answer is yes. It's not a no, it's a yes. Everything is going to be fine. All right, let's read the next verse. Behold, 
All they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Can I hear an amen? amen. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Read verse 12. Thou shalt seek them, and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing, and as a thing of naught. Verse 13, read. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not. I will help thee. Now read verse 14. Fear not, thou warm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Help me give him a big hand this morning, if you will, please. I will help you. I will help you. So if God says I will help you, what are you afraid of? I don't care what you're going through right now. God says I will help you. And when he says I will help you, then you don't need to worry about Donald Trump. Uh, he has a lot of rules. He has a lot of uh, uh, orders he's signing. But your life does not depend on any of those things. Your life depends on the mercy of God. Your life depends on the faithfulness of God. Your life depends on the kindness of God. The Bible says, wherever the sole of your feet shall tread upon, God says, it's yours already. So what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? He says, fear not, I will help you. Now let's go to the next book, Isaiah 43, in verse 1. Isaiah 43, 1. Let's read. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by my name, thy name. Thou art mine. Who do you belong to? Belong to God. And God owns everything. God is in charge of everything. God is in control of everything. So what are you afraid of? Nothing. Seriously. Now let's go on to verse 5 of Isaiah 43. Let's read. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. He says, don't, don't. I, I can fix it. Now let's go to 44 chapter of Isaiah in verse 2. Isaiah 44 verse 2, let's read. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. 54.4, 54.4. That will be our last scripture in Isaiah. It begins with fear not again. Let's read. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Did you hear that? You will not be put to shame. Seriously. You will not be put to shame. I will not. Since you are not saying amen. I will not be put to shame. I will not be put to shame. I will not be put to shame. I've been in places in my life where I thought, oh yeah. I'm going to be put to shame here. I've been in places in my life where people really look forward to me being put to shame. And God said it's only if you are not mine. It's only if you are not mine. As long as you are mine, mm -mm, you will not be put to shame. Those who are already talking about you, who are already gossiping and saying with all their Bible reading, with all their fasting, with all their Jesus, shame is about to fall on them. You, you know what I'm talking about? Don't be putting their mouth on the ground and uh, saying all kinds of things about you. That shame is coming your way in another month, in another two months. He will be put to shame. God said, fear not. Don't be afraid. You will not be put to shame. The last minute, even if it is the last minute, God will show up. Honestly, God will show up. And God will deliver you in the name of Jesus. He says, fear not, thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. Let's read on. For thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. 
and shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Turn to somebody and said, your shame is over in the name of Jesus. Let's give Jesus a big hand for that. Oh! Fear not! Everything is going to be all right. So he took the apostles and the disciples and he said, let's go to the other side. And they had to go by boat. But they got in the middle of the water and then here came this great storm. And before you realize it, water filled the boat. And they were in panic mode. Come and see grown men running up and down the boat. Luke running into Peter. And Peter said, can't you see me? And he says, no, I can't see. They're just running up and down, up and down, up and down. And they were saying, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? He is the one who started all this. He told us to let us go. We should have stayed on the other side. Have you ever noticed that even when God tells you to come, there can still be a storm? Even when you are walking in obedience to the commandment of God, that doesn't mean there will be no storm. In fact, can I say something to you who are already doubting whether you stepped out on, on God's command or not? The fact that there is a storm many times is indicative of the fact that God sent you there. That God is the one who told you to come. There will always be a storm when God says come. But one thing is this. Where he says he's taking you to, you will get there. <laughs> you will get there. You will get there. Can I hear an amen from somebody? So the storm arose and they were looking for Jesus everywhere because of fear and Jesus was down below on a pillow it's amazing the Bible specifically says he was sleeping on a pillow that means it was not a sleep that just took him away he was ready for the sleep you know when you are ready to sleep and you are not ready to sleep actually you just sleep anywhere with your shoes on with no pillow no nothing jesus deliberately put pillow the wind is blowing the wind is blowing but he took the pillow put his head on it he said i'm sleeping but what about the storm the storm is doing its own thing i am doing my own thing from now on you will sleep like a little child storm or no storm in the name of jesus he's and they came, they, they came, man. Master, yay, you are sleeping. I can't believe this. Don't you care that we perish? Ah, Jesus looked at them, said, These children, when will they know that? When will they realize I made the storm? When will they realize I made the wind? How can what I made destroy me? And then how, when will they realize that when I am in the boat, the boat cannot go down? When will they realize all this? So the Lord just reluctantly got up just to please them. All right? And then he went to the wind. He said, wind? You remember the day I made you? All right. Peace. Stop it. The Bible says he rebuked the wind. He rebuked the wind. You know what we are going to do before we leave here today? Whatever is causing fear to come into your life, we will rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Seriously. Whatever is behind this fear that has gripped you, whoever is behind this fear that is, that is gripping you, you just rebuke it and it will be silent. So when Jesus rebuked it, and he asked them, So, what is it that you don't have faith? Why are you so full of fear? You know what amazes me in verse 41? After he rebuked them for fearing, the Bible says, Again, they feared exceedingly. Now, their new fear now exceeded the fear they had before. May God deliver us from fear. Seriously. The Bible says, After he rebuked them for fearing, they feared exceedingly. Allow me this morning to take the next uh, 20 minutes or so to show you lessons you can learn about fear from this passage. Number one, fear can come upon the best of men. That's reality, folks. These were disciples. 
heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. Fear can come upon anyone. All right, so if any one of you is afraid of anything, I don't see anything bad about it. It's just you are just being human. I remember one time I my pastor was sick. Very sick. And he walked up to me, he said, uh, He said, You know, people who do what I do, they don't live long. I was fifty something years old at that time. <laughs> and I looked at him, I said, Baba, it looks like you're afraid. He said, not really, but uh, look at Reverend so-and-so. He died at 50-something. Look at Reverend so-and-so. He died at 50-something. The man was afraid this thing would kill him. The man is 70-something now. He refused to die. Turn to someone and tell them this thing will not kill you. Uh Uh-uh, you have many more years ahead of you. It's not going to kill you. I know you are afraid. I know the cat scan and the dog scan is showing you it is death. But it's not going to kill you. My father took a beautiful post picture of himself when he was 40 something years old. I went to visit my uncle two months ago and he, he was telling me about the picture. Nice picture. Beautiful suit. And I said, what was this picture for? Oh, he said, my uncle, your dad, took this picture because he felt he was going to die. And he wanted you to he wanted us to use this picture at his funeral. Forty something years old. Afraid. You know how old he was when he died? He was 93 years old. When he died. He took his picture 50 years before. And God gave him 50 extra years. Even though he has written his own obituary. On the zone and tell them you are not going anywhere yet. <laughs> You're not going anywhere yet. I know, I know this thing is troubling you. I know this thing is giving you a hard time. I know this thing is making you to give up. But you are not going anywhere yet. You are going to be old. Though. You are going to be so old. People will beg you to die. <laughs> People will say, Papa, we want to eat cow. When will you go? And people will say, They can frankly have, have you done the insurance? And I like what Franklin said yesterday. This man needs help. Oh. He said, He told his wife, When I die, just weep for one week and then go and cash my insurance after one week. Only the King Franklin can say that. Whatever you are afraid of right now, I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy is using to torment your life, to give you sleepless nights, to take away your appetite from you, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Whatever is threatening you with, it shall not be in the name of Jesus Christ. Having said that, another reason for fear is when you exalt your problems above the word of God. Fear will come on. When your problems are exalted above the word of God. Why did I say that? He simply told them. He said, let us go pass over onto the other side. If he said they were going over to the other side, then for sure they are going. No wind, no storm can stop the word from coming to pass. The word of God never fails. Can I hear an amen to that? The word of God never fails. If God has spoken it, he will watch over it. What he said, he will bring it to pass. God is not like a man that he will lie. 
If God says, let's go over to the other side, then you can go over to the other side. He said it loud and clear. They all heard it. Let's go over to the other side. If they had stood on that, there would have been no fear. 99% of my fear, 99% of your fear is because we look away from what the word says. Or we suspect it. That is this thing true? Can this thing work? See, God watches over his word to perform it. I think we're used to men saying things and not doing it. That we think God is like that. No, God is not like that. If God says this, then it will, you can take it to the bank. I like how a man of God says he prays. He said when he wants to pray about anything, he finds a scripture that promises him that thing. And he opens that scripture, he puts his finger on it, and he says, God, this is what you said. You cannot deny this. Come and bring this to pass. When you take the word of God for what it says, then there's nothing to be afraid of. Remember the story I've always told you behind this pulpit about old Peter, captured by Herod. James had been killed, and he was next. I've told you that many times behind this pulpit. And I've asked you, why did he sleep? Because if it were me, to be honest with you, <laughs> I, mean, I don't deceive myself, bro. at least for now. Maybe tomorrow I'll be different. But today, ah, I, mean, I can't sleep. Bro. I know tomorrow I will die. What am I sleeping for? In fact, before Herod comes in the morning, I will have died. Before he comes, I will have died. But rather than die, Peter was sleeping. The sleep was so deep. That the Bible says when the angel got into the prison, the angel had to smite him. Slap him. And then wake up, let's go. So, oh, we should go. And then even the Bible says, have you ever seen your children when they wake up and they don't want to wake up? They, they, They are bumping into everything. Bumping into everything. That's how drunk he was. That when he came out, he thought he was having a dream. Folks, why was he, you know what I found out? When you are free from fear, you can sleep. Seriously. Fear will take sleep away from you. Completely. Fear will take appetite from you. They will tell you to come and eat your favorite food. You'll say you are not hungry. It's a lie. You are hungry. But fear has replaced the food for you. The reason Peter was able to sleep is because in John chapter 21 verse 18. Can someone please open it and read for me? John 21 in verse 18. Jesus told him something. You found a pastor. And I read. Verily, verily. Now this is Jesus talking to Peter. Years before. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Uh When thou was young, Uh thou gettest thyself. And walkest with that thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt shalt stretch forth thy hands. Uh And another shall get thee. Uh And carry thee with that thou wouldest not. That's it. He said, Peter, this is how you're going to end up your life. When you get old, number one, he said you will not die young. He said, when you get old, you will stretch your hand. And someone will carry you to where you don't want to go. You will spread your hand and you will die on the cross. That's how you will die. They will nail you to the cross. And Peter just came to the conclusion That I know how Jesus said I will die. Jesus said I will die on a cross. The way Herod is going to kill me. It's not on a cross. So this death is not for me. So I can sleep. But they plan to kill you tomorrow. I know. But the word of God works even at the last minute. And so even though he said I will die. I will not die. Because his own way of executing people. It's not by the cross. And so he slept. And so he lived. Because he believed the word of God. Ah, May God give us the grace. I didn't hear your amen. 
I said, may God give us the grace. Even me, the preacher who is preaching, may God give me the grace. Because if we have the grace, folks, we can sleep. My time is going, so let me go to number two. Our fears are usually triggered by something. Nobody gets afraid for no reason. They are always triggered by something. All right? That something may be real. That something may be something imagined. But they are always triggered by something. Maybe what you see or what you think you are seeing. What you hear or what you think you are hearing. All right? What you feel or what you think you are feeling. What you know or what you think you know. The list is endless. There arose a great storm and the waves beat upon the ship so that it was now full. Folks, listen. God does not guarantee us that we will never face storms in life. Any pastor who tells you that is lying to you. In fact, that pastor's name should be changed to storm. There will be storms. There will be storms in marriages. There will be storms in health. There will be storms in finances. There will be storms from immigration. There will be storms from your profession. Storms in the immediate family. Storms in the extended family. Storms on the job. The list has no end. In fact, they may be like this storm that is called a great storm. But no matter how great the storms are, the word of God is greater. You didn't hear what I said. No matter how great the storm is, the word of God is greater. Let's go to the other side and there's nothing to be afraid of. What happens in between is their own business. We will conquer because the word of God says we are going to the other side. You can look at the wind or you can look at the word. Choose to look at the word and the wind is immaterial. It's immaterial. Number three. Verse 38 is one verse that is loaded. And I'll spend some time on it. Chapter 4. Verse 38. And it was in the hinder part of the ship. Asleep on a pillow. And they went, woke him up, and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? The first thing I see here is that fear is a robber. It robs you of sleep. It robs you of rest. It robs you of quietness. Old men running up and down. <laughs> I read something online yesterday. I just said, God, this is so true. It was written by a man called Dr. Stanley Jones. Let me read what he wrote to you. This will bless you. He said, I am inwardly fashioned for faith, not for fear. Fear is not my native land. Faith is. He said, I am so made that worry and anxiety are sand in the machinery of life. Faith is the oil. Now listen to the next statement. I live better by faith and confidence than by fear. He wrote, doubt and anxiety is no good for my makeup. In anxiety and in worry and in fear, my being is grasping for breath. These are not my native air, but in faith and confidence. I breathe freely when I walk in faith and I walk in fearlessness. A John Hopkins University doctor said, according to him, look at what he says. We do not know why it is that warriors die sooner than non-warriors. But that is a fact. But I, who I am simple of mind, think I know. 
Look at what the doctor said. We are inwardly constructed in nerve and tissue and brain cell and soul. We are inwardly constructed for faith and not for fear. God made us that way. To live by fear and worry is to live against reality. So a lot of things about you will fight against fear and worry. And we say, no, the way God made us, we're not supposed to have this inside us. The way God made us, this is not part of our constitution. And when you allow it in, it destroys everything. But there's something else. Those who are fearful are a problem to those who are fearless. You didn't hear what I said. They won't sleep and they won't let you sleep. They won't eat and they won't let you eat. When they are fearful about something and they are tossing back and forth in bed and you happen to be their partner and you are in bed with them, Rather than let you sleep, they are pulling the comfort off you. And you're saying, honey, what's happening, sir? Uh, there's nothing. And you know there's something. He's worried about something he cannot eat. He's fearful about something he cannot eat. Consequently, you yourself, you lose your appetite. Can you help me tell somebody, please don't kill your spouse. Don't, 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 don't. If you want to kill yourself, die. But don't kill somebody else. The man has been walking, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils. He was exhausted. And so he decided to take a nap. But he said, No, nap for where? You cannot take a nap. You cannot sleep. You cannot rest as long as we are free. Those who are fearful are a problem to those who are fearless. And you know what I found out? When they fear, 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 fear long enough around you, if you are not careful, you become like them. But there's another thing. Fear will always trigger worry. Fear will always trigger anxiety. Where you see one, you are likely to see the other. And the bad thing about fear is this. It questions the care of God for his own. That's really what it is. Carest thou that we perish? Carest not thou that we perish? You mean Jesus now doesn't care again? A man came to my living room in Alabama. John was his name. And I'm, I, I've never seen anyone do that to God. But he looked up in my living room and asked God some stupid questions. And I just led him out. I said, don't bring trouble into my house. Well, you know why? He was afraid. Honestly, he was afraid. He was married to a girl, to a white girl. This is a white guy too. Who went to the same church. And this, she, he loved this girl girl. The girl just walked away. And was afraid his life was collapsing around him. And that's how he became my friend. And I just told him, I said, can't we agree and believe God that God will touch her wherever she is and bring her back? She has stopped coming to Bible study. She has stopped coming to church. And then we prayed. And guess what happened? She showed up. And then I saw him in Bible study. I said, why did you come? He said, I just came to tell you that the prayer worked. I said, you mean she came back? Said, yeah, she came back. I said, that doesn't guarantee she won't go again. I don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. And of course, ultimately she left. Of course, I knew the way he was. The woman will not stay. God just wanted to prove to him that he answers prayers and that if he holds on to God he can perform the miracle 
fear questions God's care for his own. Can I say something to you? God cares. He cared yesterday. He cares today. And he will care tomorrow. He cared when there was no storm. He cares now that there is a storm. And he will yet care after the storm is over. Let me go to one more thing. About fear. Fear imagines the worst. How can they say we will perish? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. You have the son of God with you. But fear now is telling you you gonna perish. Can I make a plea to you? Please go and change your language. Did you hear what I said? Go and do what? Go and change your language. All this phrase of I am afraid before you make a statement. I am afraid. I am afraid it's not good. I'm afraid. I'm afraid I will not be able to make it. I am afraid. You never catch me saying I am afraid. Even when I'm afraid, I, I refuse to use that phrase of English. Because we destroy ourselves like that. Imagining the worst. Remember the story I told you? I used to work for a bank. And being in the head office, and being an officer in the bank, I had to travel all over the country. And some of these places you don't want to go by road. You had to go by air. And back in them days, traveling by air is putting your life in your hand. But we went. And then I took a flight from hell. I was traveling from the capital city of my country to a city we call the Coal City in the east. And somehow, somehow, before you land in that Coal City, there's a, there's a spot for, for turbulence. You don't miss it. I don't know why. Hey! Turbulence of that day, I will never forget. We are going up, we are going down, sideways, to the right, to the left, back and forth. We, we were just sitting trying to enjoy ourselves, then the, the light came on. And the captain came, please, fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> I was saying to myself, is it today? No, you imagine you imagine the worst when you are afraid. You imagine the worst. I'm not married yet. <laughs> Lord, I need children. When I'm not even married, how can I have children? When people die in air crash, they won't even find their body. My hand will be two kilometers away. My leg will be five miles away. I was afraid. And there's something about this people that work in airplanes. They've trained them not to be afraid. So even if they're afraid, they will pretend as if they're not afraid. And the lady was just going around. Still serving in the middle of this foolishness. I stand before you, Alina. Still serving. Pulling, pushing the buggy. Yes, what do you want? We call it granite in my country. You call it peanut here. You want granite? What drink? Soda. What soda? Pepsi? Okay, it's Pepsi. Uh, what do you want? Uh, Coke. Okay, here's Coke. <laughs> What's my turn? <laughs> Sir, what do you want? I'm not hungry. No, no, no. Just, just, just. And I said, these people foolish? 
They see what is going on and they want to, to eat. So I stood there. I sat there and I was binding and loosening. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you are the one that stopped the wind. When you were in the boat, I command this wind by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even as Joshua did, he looked at the wind and said, wind, stop. No, it wasn't wind. It was, uh, it was the sun and the moon. I said, we can't stop it. The more I prayed, the more the wind blew. I said, yes, this is it right here. And the lady just kept on going. Kept on going. Kept on going. I saw people who were eating. I said, these people are crazy. How can you eat in a situation like this? Ah, may the Lord deliver us from fear. I sat down there for a while. And then she went into the <laughs> cockpit of the captain. When she opened the door of the cockpit, I stand before you are lying out. I peeped <laughs> to look at the captain. Maybe if I saw what the captain was doing, I'll be able to know how terrible our situation will be. The captain had one hand on that thing that they move like this. I forgot what they call it. And he had the other hand on his chair resting like this. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. So when the lady came in, the hand that was resting like this, he used it to grab the drink. And while he had one hand, the, 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 the storm was on. While he had one hand on whatever they call that thing, he took the drink. And then for a minute, he took his hand off that thing. And he tore the peanut bag with two hands. And I stood up like this, but my seat belt will not let me stand. So I sat. And the man just tore the thing, put the peanut in his mouth, took the drink, and drank it. I said, wait. If the captain can drink, if the captain can eat, I guess I can eat too. I'm telling you the truth. I guess I can drink too. So I rang my bell. I pressed the button. The lady came. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, is there any, any, any problem? I said, yes. Is the peanut remaining? She said, I said, bring me peanut. Uh, bring me, uh, I don't know whether I was serving up or cook that I asked for that day. I said, if the captain can eat, I can eat too. If the captain is relaxed, I can be relaxed too. If the captain, yo, you get my point now. You know where I'm going. <laughs> now you know where I'm going. Now you know where I'm going. Uh, the captain that we have, he eats in a storm. He eats and he drinks in a storm. And he rests in a storm. If he can eat, if he can drink, if he can rest, if he can sleep, ladies and gentlemen, why not you? Why not me? Come on, let me put your hands together and give the Lord a big hand. There's nothing to be afraid of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing to be afraid of. But let me give you two more things and then we'll pray. About this thing called fear. Oh, by the way, rarely does a plane crash in a turbulence. Rarely. I've never heard of one that crashed because of turbulence. They are built for turbulence. So that's why they have that wing, folks. Takes them up, takes them down, takes them to the side, takes them to the left. Really, will you see a plane crash because of turbulence? Can I say something to you? Your plane is not crashing. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's not crashing. Turbulence is not going to bring you down. You are built for flight. You are built for storm. You are built for wind. You are built for all these things that are going on around you. You took off and you will land safely in the name of Jesus. Let me give you two more and then we'll pray. About this thing called fear. Fear magnifies the presence of the problem more than the presence of the problem solver. 
Did you hear what I said? Fear magnifies the presence of the problem more than the presence of the problem solved. An African man was walking on the street one day and he saw a black cat crossing over to the other side of the road. The African man thought to himself that he was going to have a bad luck on that day. Worried about seeing a black cat, he asked his friend, what do you think will be my fate because of the black cat that I saw this morning? <laughs> his friend replied, well, that will depend on whether you are a rat or not. <laughs> if you are a rat, then you won't last till the end of this day. But if you are not a rat, the cat was just going its own way. You know what? I believe in dreams. But don't let your life be ruled by dreams. If every dream, dream we had had come to pass, we will all be dead. You are a Christian. You are not a rat. No cat can kill you. Can I hear an amen from you? That's why I love what David said. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 4 is what I like. He said, yes, yes, yes. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. I said, the last surgery you did, didn't you think you were going to die doing it? And here you are in church, <laughs> praising the name of the Lord. The Lord is with me. Even though I pass through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, <clears throat> they comfort me. That's why I love that old church song. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should my heart shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? It's not time to go to heaven yet. When Jesus sees my portion, hallelujah, my constant friend, he sees. His eyes up. Oh, you know that song. <laughs> I don't know. He watches me. Yes, he does. His eyes on. What do you know? I don't know. song now. I sing because nothing is going to make me sad, people. <laughs> I sing because I'm free. Yes, it is. His heart
as you can to the altar. He looked at the wind and he rebuked the wind. I just want you to come to the Lord this morning and say, Lord, whatever is causing me to be afraid, whatever plans to cause me to be afraid, I give it to you this morning. I rebuke it out of my life. I rebuke it out of my soul. I rebuke it out of my spirit. Whatever the enemy will bring my way to terrify me, I hand it over to you this morning. Afternoon, the Bible says Jesus Christ will beat the wind and everything stopped. I'm believing God, everything will come down for you this afternoon as we give it to the Lord at this altar in the name of Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> 
yes lord father god i bring myself before you this afternoon and i bring this men and women this boys and girls before you god we are flesh dust and ashes but sometimes when the storm hits Lord, it almost blows us away but you've told us this morning it's not time to stop praying about going to heaven yet because you are a constant friend constant friend if you can look upon the sparrows we know there's nothing we go through that you don't know about I just pray this morning that every fear that is in us we rebuke them in the name of Jesus everything that is triggering fear in us we rebuke them in the name of Jesus we ask you Lord that the peace of God that passeth all understanding the peace of God that enables a man and a woman to sleep inside a storm that peace will rest upon us in the name of Jesus from today may we be known to be men and women who worry about nothing but men and women that cast all their cares upon him knowing he careth for them I speak peace into your situation I speak peace into your life I speak peace into your storm I speak peace into the great storm I speak peace into that which is terrifying you I speak grace to be able to sleep when others are running up and down in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray that no matter what the storm is today no matter what the storm will be tomorrow you will outlast all of them in the name of Jesus that other side that you want to get to and the storm said you will not get there by the grace of God we will celebrate with you because you will get to the other side I decree it for you in the name of the Father I decree it for you in the name of the Son I decree it for you in the name of the Holy Spirit and everybody said everybody said everybody said come on help me give the Lord a big hand this afternoon in the name of Jesus you are blessed you are blessed you are blessed you are blessed you are blessed, you are blessed. I sing because I'm happy I sing because I'm free He's right He's on the spiral and I know you are just a baby 